Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. Really Big Plant. So, first things first, my big hole is finally fixed. It took like over a month of having people in and out of here almost every day. I'm not really sure why it took so long, but it was like mainly just one guy doing everything. Yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a video a couple videos ago about how I had like a house disaster. Um, basically I had some water damage and I had to have a big hole cut in my ceiling. And um, that really derailed my whole life. I had to have a big dehumidifier in here pretty much the whole time that was going on. And now all of my plants have spider mites and they are super dusty. Um, and it's not just normal dust, it's like construction dust. So they had put up this plastic sheeting, like a barrier to try to contain the mess, but they were going in and out, the, the um, contractors were going in and out with all of their supplies and they painted everything and everything's just got this like coat of dust on it. And I feel like even though I've been wiping things down, it's still kind of like settling. So um, that's going on. And I kind of like gave up on keeping my plants clean during this and as a result, I've now got really bad spider mites. And I was ignoring it because I thought it was like the, the extreme dirtiness of my house after being under construction, but it's a compounding spider mite plus dust kind of issue that I'm having. So um, we're gonna do a whole bunch of spider mite treatment today. I have a hose finally in this box. I don't know what my problem is. I've been living here for like months and I just haven't had a hose this whole time. I've got like a, a hookup outside. I've just been using the spigot. Um, and every time I've gone to the store, like grocery store, Costco, Home Depot, I've just always forgotten to buy a hose. Anyway, I finally ordered one and I have one so I can wash my plants. So we're gonna set that up and wash some things. And then we're gonna begin the journey of spider mite treatment and we're gonna talk about that. And then I also have um, some repottings that I wanna show you. I'm gonna be doing lots of spraying, cleaning, all that kind of good stuff today. So let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, my house is still coming back together. I recently freed this space back up, but my hole is fixed. <laughs> so that's great news. Um, and I finally got some plants back over there. Oh, maybe I'll just show you this first. I've got my philodendron giganteum up there on a stool. People have asked why my giganteum looks like this, <laughs> like why it looks so weird. It's got really, really long internodal spacing in some areas of the plant, as in the leaves are really far apart. It's because I have subjected this plant to all sorts of different lighting conditions, but mainly long periods of very low light. And that's caused my philodendron giganteum here to grow really long and lanky. It stretches towards the light in some places. Um, and then these leaves are looking all bent up because this is residual damage from um, months ago, sometime last year when this plant crashed off of the top shelf that it was on and pretty much all of the leaves got bent. Um, but a lot of them are still hanging in there. So yeah, this plant looks kind of crazy because it hasn't had good enough light. So since I moved here, it's been getting a lot brighter light and the leaves are growing much closer together up at the top there. If I take you over here, you can see how it's, it's like around the corner from the window. Um, but that light does shine down on it. So We'll see. I kind of like to use the internodal spacing as like a gauge of how much light my plants are getting. Like you can kind of listen to what your plants are telling you by looking at the distance between the nodes and seeing if they're getting enough light. So if you, for example, have a philodendron giganteum like this and your leaves are coming out stacked really close together at the base, that means your plant is getting really great light and you're putting it in the right spot. Unlike me, who's been keeping this plant pretty far from a window for most of its life and you get as a result, sections like, like this, like a long section of stem where there's no leaves on it. Um, whereas like higher up here, um, you can see that the leaves are starting to grow closer and closer together. And that's because I moved it into a brighter light location. This is my Diffenbachia here. Mom has asked me why this plant looks like this every time she sees it in comparison to how nice it used to look before. But I can show you if I go right next to it and bring in the camera angle like this, it looks a lot more like how it used to look in my other videos. So it was kind of just the angle I used to show it from. It kind of looks the same, but in this much bigger space, it looks a little bit sad now. So um, yeah, we're gonna prune that up and we're gonna wipe down all of these leaves in a little bit. So 
Yeah, but let's, while it's still sunny out, let's set up this hose. So I wanna wash off my ficus triangularis. It's really, really, really been suffering. Here is my triangularis now. It has very few leaves left on it. Um, it got totally decimated by spider mites and I didn't realize it until too late. So when I was moving last fall, it had spider mites and I'd been spraying it down and kind of washing it off and I thought I took care of the problem. Um, but then as it got really dry, it started dropping like all of its leaves and I thought that was because of a humidity issue in my house. Um, and then I noticed after it continued to drop leaves and the leaves started to have a little bit of this like speckling damage on them when normally they just kind of turn solid yellow, um, it's, it's covered in spider mites. So um, then I just kept forgetting to buy a hose and it's too big to fit into my showers. Um, like the ceilings are tall in the bathroom, but the shower head placement on the wall is like kind of low down and none of my showers have a spray handle, which is something that I need to update into my bathrooms. I need to put at least one bathroom with the spray nozzle so that I can wash some plants off. But anyway, we're gonna take this plant outside. Today seems like a really great day for that. So go wash that plant off as well as a bunch of others that are suffering with spider mites. Look. This is my rescue alocasia, Lauderbachiana. It had been doing great for a while and then it got spider mites and now all its leaves are dying. This is my alocasia stingray back there, which I showed in my last video showing you all the new plants I'd gotten. Um, I have washed it several times, um, but it has spider mites. So we're all going out for a bath. my very first hose <laughs> never had a hose before um okay so <gasps> i'm delighted wow <laughs> i don't know why i'm so excited by this it's just a hose but i guess i've, I've never had my own hose living the dream right now. Look at me, look at me in my hose.
was so exhilarating. I have literally never done outdoor garden chores before. I mean, those are for my indoor plants, but I've literally never had a space where I've been able to take a plant outside and wash it. So I've had, so I've had to take that triangularis outside in the past because it's never fit in my shower. Um, and when it's had really bad dust and mites and stuff before, I've had to take it outside. Um, but yeah, this is really exciting. I realized I should just treat these with neem oil while they're out there. Okay, so I've got my neem oil and I've got my bottle and my spray bottle. Okay, so I put in just under two tablespoons um, and it recommends two to four tablespoons per gallon. So that's like half the recommended amount. So I'm only gonna put in about half, half the amount of water. So here's our neem oil solution. Got our neem oil solution and ready to go take this outside and lightly spray everything down. Okay, so my plants are drying off and I feel, I feel elated. <laughs> I've been waiting for the ability to do something like this for so long and it's been really cold since I moved here. It's actually colder here than San Francisco. It gets cold. So I'm now in zone 9, 9A and it gets down to 25 degrees at night sometimes. San Francisco usually never gets below 40, but it didn't matter because I was always doing stuff inside. And then here, I kind of thought that it would be really warm, but it, it's way colder at night here than I thought it was going to be. Most mornings I wake up and the grass is covered in frost. Um, the first time it happened, I walked outside and I thought there must have been some kind of like construction debris that had coated my lawn in some sort of white powder. And I went outside and was just so weirded out. And I reached down and was touching it and realized the grass was covered in frost, um, which is something that I grew up with. I mean, I'm from Chicago. I've seen frost on the grass, but it's been a long time. So I haven't had the ability to really like do too much stuff with my plants outside. So now as it's getting warmer, we can start actually doing some things. I also have, I have a lot of slugs around here, I've noticed. And I feel like I need to watch the plants to make sure that slugs don't crawl into them <laughs> because this area, whatever it is, there seem to be a lot of little slug, sluggies living around. So I have to figure out how to get rid of those. A couple days ago, I tried to take some of these plants out during the rain when it was raining and I set them out there for like just a few minutes. I put them outside and within moments, I noticed that all of these slugs emerged and started to beeline towards my plants. Like, I don't know how they saw the plant from a distance, but the slugs must have sensed their presence and they started to emerge, the slugs and the worms. And within moments, I had slugs trying to climb up into my plants to escape the rain. So that was unfortunately a big fail and I had to bring those plants in really quick because I did not want them to become slug homes. <sighs> no worms. Is that a huge worm on the outside of that white pot? Do you see that? I totally do. I don't know. It kind of looks like a bug. You need to bring them in. It's like a slug. <clears throat> Can you go pull that off of there? Yeah. It happened so fast. They've been out there for like two minutes. How are they covered in slugs and things already? Ew. What is that? It's a slug. No slugs allowed. 
too many slugs. Right here, I have my philodendron maximum. And I showed this in my previous video where I showed plants that I've gotten recently. And this philodendron maximum is like one of my new prized possessions. Also, since the last time I showed it to you, I did pot it up um, into LECA. So let's, um, let's take a look at that because it was the first time I ever used LECA. Okay, so I'm here with my philodendron maximum and I still have it in water but i really want to try this out in leca so i have no experience using leca leca stands for light expanded clay aggregate and it is a form of potting medium that's totally inert it's made from um, clay it's basically like little balls of terracotta that you can use instead of potting medium i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this but just in case anyone isn't um it's those little balls that you probably seen in people's pictures and I have no experience using it just because um, it's always seemed like a lot of work to me to try to put a plant into LECA. Um, but I've been watching people grow in LECA over many years and I've seen that people seem to have great success with their plants. Um, and from my recent experiences using perlite as a growing medium, it's been very successful. And I think growing in LECA is probably somewhat similar. So anyway, I got some for the first time ever and I wanna use it. So I have this net pot here, <laughs> what a disaster. We're still mid construction. Got this, this bag, it's a four and a half pound bag of LECA. It was kind of expensive. I mean, especially compared to regular potting medium, this stuff is, is very expensive. Um, so I thought I got a lot of it, but this doesn't actually seem like that much. I have to do some root pruning on the maximum, which we're gonna do in a second. And I have a feeling that the root volume is going to do, decrease by quite a bit because I've had it in water for a while and a lot of those roots have started to rot, unfortunately. We're gonna try this for now. If we have to repot it pretty soon, that's okay. Um, I just wanna give this Leica a try and I feel like this plant already came in moss. I might as well just go for it. Okay, so the first step I know is that I need to go wash this. So I'm going to go take this outside. Um, I'm not going to do it in the sink because I don't want this clay to turn into like cement or to solidify in my pipes. So I'm going to do this outside.
I just chopped off a ton of rotten roots, which I think unfortunately mostly rotted in my hair because I just had this plant in water for a really long time and should have potted it up sooner, but um, it's okay. I've got a lot of new growth on these roots and I chopped off basically all of the roots that don't have a little pink tip growing. So I was worried that the pot that I filled with LECA um, and prepared for this was going to be too small, but I've really, really cut back on the amount of roots that have to go in there. So I think that that's going to be good. So let's, let's try to figure this out. I've never done LECA before or use LECA for repotting, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> So I want to put a moss pole in here. So I always use these same ones. I keep reordering them even though they're really short because I like that the pole that they come with is, is made of plastic. So they last a really long time. excited I have never potted in Leica before I always thought that it looked kind of like ugly or like weird to me but now that I'm looking at it myself um I'm loving it it's so clean I guess I finally get the appeal now there's no like tiny bits of dirt anywhere uh, that just reminded me I, I dropped some on the ground and they rolled away but it's not like a dirt mess there's just like a couple of marbles that I need to pick up off the ground now um <laughs> here it is Taking care of this is going to require a whole different fertilizing situation. It's going to require a whole routine of liquid nutrients. And I haven't even really begun to learn about that yet. It's basically what you normally use to fertilize plants, but a liquid, much, much diluted version. Um, that's a super simplification. But for now, I just have this distilled water and I'm going to fill her up. So exciting. Yeah, now I've got it in here in water and we'll see how this plant grows. My philodendron maximum, my first plant in LECA. So I do have it here now in its LECA container. It's doing 
really well. Um, I really like that I put it in this beaker and I can keep an eye on the water level. Also, just a quick update, I can show you my philodendron squamiferum here doing so well putting out a new leaf and my ficus elastica um, shaveriana is also growing a new leaf right over there. So that's really exciting. Okay, I think the plants are mostly dried off now, so I'm gonna bring them in and we can carry about our day. I feel super accomplished. <laughs> is it just me or does the triangularis? Well, I was gonna say, is it just me or does the triangularis already look a lot better? But I think it must be just me because as I look here on the little screen on my phone, it does not look much better to me. But when I look with my eyes, <laughs> it looks happier to me. Maybe it's just because I know that I just took care of it, but I feel like it's sending me vibes, like it's saying thank you. So <laughs> you're welcome, tree. I'm gonna just bob around over there and leisurely wipe down my leaves and head on into the evening of plant care. <laughs> 